All right, Lamar in the building. <laughs> Brother man, what's going on? How you feel? I'm doing all right. All right, so you reached out to me. You gave me a looks looks as though as a rats to riches kind of story, bro. Like, uh, look like you had a look like you had some hardships and and stuff like that, and and look like trucking came along and 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 got you on a good foot. Let's uh, let's hear your story, man. Let's start uh, let's start by you introducing yourself and uh. And let the people know what you was doing before trucking. Um, so I was in the military before trucking. Uh, got out of the military. Uh, 2014, sold cars for like a year. Um, was going to have my first son in 2015. Um, so realized that, you know, selling cars really wasn't, steady enough, I guess. So my father-in-law was a trucker, so we uh, we got to talking. He was like, you know, um, maybe you should look into trucking. And I did. Um, kind of didn't listen to his words of wisdom, so I started out with uh, CRSD trucking in 2015, and that's where I got my CDL at. All right. So, all right, so before we get into CRST, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, military and uh, and in car sales i mean like uh -huh. you know in the military so you just did so you just did what the, the four and out how, how long you was in the military for yeah joined joined 2010 got out 14 so i mean you i, I guess you was gun ho to get into the military what, what was the reason for you uh getting out of it <laughs> man you, you look at some of the things in the military man and you know, in high school, man, military was, you know, my dream. And then I got in there and realized this ain't it no more. You know, and so I, you know, and then I had, you know, got married to, you know, actually we're still married today, going on nine years. Uh, she had two kids and I loved her two kids dearly. So I realized that, you know, being in the military, I didn't really want to move around and be like, you know, what my dad did with us when he was in the military and, you know, I kind of wanted to give our kids now more of a stable income and more of a stable household, which later on in the story is going to realize I, I wasn't very successful at that at the time, but I realized me and my wife realized, Hey, you know, I don't think it's right to reenlist and then move around and, you know, keep, uh, you know, every couple of years upending and then moving. And she was like, yeah, let's, you know, let's try to, try our cards or something else now you 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 was in the military now you know i, I always wanted to uh ask uh military personnel uh my you know shout out to my uh to my ex brother-in-law he he was in the military he was in there for about 16 years uh he he you know he only needed four more to go to to, to retire but you know life happens and you know he was he was he he chose to uh he he chose to discharge himself for other reasons but uh -huh. for you guys that's 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 not reenlisting you know after the 4 years uh you after you came out you went into uh car sales but how hard is it to get a government job after 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 leaving the military because i i would assume it would have been at least it would have been easy for you guys to to, to get some type of government job. Yeah. To be honest with you, so I'm I'm considered disabled vet. I'm fifty percent disabled, so I'm some what you call a preferred vet. But to be honest with you, man, I have not really looked into it. I haven't really had any necessity of really looking into a government job. And you know, I mean, for instance, for example, look how many times the government has shut down in the past, you know, decade. You know, how many times these government people had to go without paychecks, you know, because, you know, people in our government can't seem to work out their differences to keep the government running every year. I think this year was the first year I think that the government hadn't shut down, but it was on the brink of it. Um, I mean, so just think about how, you know, at the end of every year, especially around Christmas time, you know, one of the most important times of the year 
happy times of the year, family, you know, where you spend time with your families every year, you're worried about, hey, am I going to get a paycheck this holiday season? You know, so it's like, well paying, you know, you could make that argument, but stable, probably not. Man, okay, so that's what's up. So you decided to get into car sales. How was was uh, that was, was that car sales were like a, a major dealership or like one of them secondhand yeah, so, on the corner so type I, car sales? No, no, it was it was a real deal, Holyfield. So, um, I worked at a pretty large outfit in El Paso, Texas. I was stationed in Fort Blues in El Paso, Texas. Uh, did really well. Um, uh, they sold Hondas, Mazdas, uh, Chevys, and Volkswagen. I was okay at it, you know. For me being my taking my first crack at it, I was I was okay at it. You know, some months you you kill it, you know, you make some good commission, and then the next month, you know, you're not doing so well, you know. And so it's like, I mean, I probably couldn't got a lot better at it if I would have you know, stuck in it and probably, you know, you know, put my head down and, um, did a lot better than, you know, what I was doing. But, uh, uh, just at the time, like with having my, my, well, he's seven now, but having my son, or going to have my son around the corner, it's like, Hey, you know, I need to find something more stable. My father-in-law had been trucking for, you know, at that time, about 26 years. And, you know, we talked about it. He says, look, he says, nobody plans to go into trucking. They just kind of fall into it. And he said, for you know, now he says for 34 years now, you know, he keeps telling himself, hey, I'm going to get out of it. <laughs> he just, this is the year I'm going to get out of trucking. It just never gets out of it. You know, never, it just, never, you fall into it and you just. Never happens. Just it's just, it just, it's in your blood once you get into it, man. It's like. You'll take some time off. You know, I just got finished doing a, a you know, doing a reaction on a, on a truck driver that just recently got out of it, you know, because of, you know, Scooby -Doo. yeah, among things he did. That's, uh, that's one of the main, my, my main inspirations out here. I got a couple yeah. of them out here. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He, Scooby Doo, man. He, he Karen decided, Hawthorne, he turned me on to Karen Hawthorne. I right. mean, and he decided to, you know, he, he, he decided to take a break. You know, and ain't, ain't no telling how long that break's going to be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because eventually, eventually the road is going to call you back and you, you're you going to fall right back into that road. Uh, but what's, oh, yeah. the, what's, what's the competition like? Because now, listen, you know, I, I you know, I, I, I've been a purchaser of vehicles throughout my lifetime. I always, you know, I, I'm, I'm from the old school. So this is the first year that I actually use the app to actually purchase a vehicle and i was real surprised at 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 how fast and how convenient it was for me to get this vehicle but back then you know i would always have to go into the uh dealership i would see a vehicle that i want and i'll be like okay let's go for this but then you know the 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 salesman would come back with some bs talking about well the company they don't want to they don't want to uh, uh, finance the vehicle because of this, that, and the third, and and all the haggling uh -huh. and all that stuff. What what was the competition between you and the other guys there just to get just to get a sale? So you pretty much have like your group of friends in the in the dealership. You know, you have friends with mechanics, you have friends with managers, you have other salesmen that you work with, and so like. And how you built those relationships, really, and how I probably got my foot into the door, you know, and was able to get a couple sales that I got and get my foot in the door with customers and referrals, was I had a guy there, you know, his name was John Brady. And uh, he would hand me deals to work for him because he was so busy. And so I would work the deals and sometimes he'd want half the commission. Sometimes I'd get the whole commission. It just depends on how much involved he was. He had to help me with the deal. Um, and so from that point forward, when he, when he, so he was handing me a client base to where I could contact, try to get referrals. Also, I would, you know, on my downtime, I would go and hang out 
in the service area and, you know, talk to service advisors to say, hey, man, who do you have in the, in the shop today? Get a hold of some customers that were maybe in a lease or maybe, you know, about two or three years into their finance of a vehicle. Say, hey, you know, you know, the market's real strong for this vehicle right now. I'm pretty sure I can get you a strong buyout and get you into a strong payment on another one and try to beat or try to match your payment you're at now, minimal money down, blah, blah, blah. And so it was, so the competition's there. So like Saturdays were the worst days, like we're the, well, best days for sales, but worst days for competition because you were at each other's throat. And it's just, you know, I remember one Saturday I had four customers in one day. I got there at seven thirty in the morning. I didn't leave till nine o'clock at night. You know, it's just, it's brutal. And you're really at the mercy of, 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 of two things, the customer and your customer and your customer experience or your customer service experience. So, if you're going to treat a customer like crap and not give way, you know, to any negotiations or anything, it's like, and we had salesmen like that. We had salesmen that they wouldn't give a dollar off MSRP, you know? And I mean, obviously they would have the most sales revenue for the month, but at the end of the day, you know, when a customer goes home and thinks, Hey man, I think I just got screwed. You know, are they really more likely to come back and shop at that dealership? I don't think so. You know, uh, right. so like the competition was pretty fierce. Yeah. So you you say you you was there like like at the crack of dawn and you only had like four customers and you left at nine o'clock at night. So yep. you guys, do you guys get paid hourly or or is it just? No, it's, it's commission. Oh. So where I was at, it was it was 25 percent of the profit. So, you know, if you made a thousand dollars on a car, right? Yeah, you know, that's kind of hard to see. You know, a lot of people think a lot of markups in a lot of these cars, especially new cars, there's not really that much markup in them from invoice to MSRP. Uh, the, your bread and butter will really be used cars, but let's say, you know, gross profit with a thousand dollars, you'd make 250. You know, um, you make $250 off that one car. You know, so if you sold $4,000 cars, you know, you know, thousand dollar profit cars in a day, you just made, you know, a thousand dollars in that day. But then who's to say that next day you come and you don't make you don't make any sale. You know, who's to say the next rest of that week is just a a birdshot week and you don't you don't make anything. You know, it's just it, there's just so many variables that go into it. It's like that's why you have to make every customer experience count. And it was just stressful, man. It really was. And you know, a lot a lot of people don't understand how long it how how long it takes to work a customer deal, you know, and it just, it drains you. And it's just, if I had to put truck driving and car sales, you know, on a scale from one to 10, well, not even one to 10, like which one drains you the worst, it would be car sales. I can imagine, you know, I, I, I can imagine because, you know, for, for you, you know, from start to finish, you got to you 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 got to start the process you got to you got to sell the customer into the car then once you sell the customer into the car then it, the process from there you got to you got to sell the finance company into the customer so your 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 job is stressed from 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 start to finish oh, yeah. so no wonder it takes you guys oh, yeah. It, it takes you guys about three, four. Well, back then it was like three, four hours. But, but now with with online car sales like uh, Carvana, Car Mats, uh, uh, Drive Time, and all like that, you know, it pretty much cuts you guys out of the out of the equation. How well, how did that how how I think you're, how do I, how do the online how do the online affects you guys? Uh, affects you guys physically to be honest some some people you know prefer the online i don't like this past year i was looking to buy so me and my wife we bought a minivan last july uh and then last year you know so i realized like hey you know my wife does a lot of running while i'm out on the road she spends a lot in fuel I have a little beat up Mazda that, you know, I want to give to my son when he gets his permit, you know, let's fix up together. And so I want to buy another car. So I was going to buy another car through Carvana. I was also in talks with CarMax. Uh, and I think I was also looking at a couple of vehicles on Broom. 
the one thing that people don't really understand about these these sites and nothing is negotiable. Their price is their price, which a lot of times is above, you know, we'll, we'll see that it's at value, but in a lot of times it's, it's, it's above what you could probably get at a car dealership. You know, and it kind of sounds like I'm batting for the car salesman. A lot of, there's a lot of bad car salesmen out there, but there's also a lot of good. So I decided, Hey, I'm going to go down to the Chevrolet dealership in my, in my, in my town down in San Antonio. And I'm going to see what they have, you know, and to be able to look at the car and to be able to have your, your car salesman, your finance manager fight for your interest rate. Like a lot of, a lot of those, Car set, car sites were quoting me a higher interest rate than I was, what I got at the dealership, you know. And so I don't think it's it's going to make that much of an impact on the industry. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure it will, but until you can actually fight for your own, you know, interest rate, and you know, of course, you can go to a bank and get your own, you know, pre-approval and submit it through the sites. But you know. There's a there's there's a there's a good feeling when you got three or four banks fighting for your business as a car dealership, you know. And so to be able to do that, I mean, I think I'd pick a car dealership over online sales any day. All right, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. All right, so let's get into uh let's let's get into this rats the riches story, man. So, uh, CRST, you decided to uh get your license through them. Did did you get your license through? Yes. Yeah, so I've been driving since about 2015, but I really didn't start driving until 2019. And that's because those first years, I was a complete fuck up. You know, I mean, not accident and tickets and not none of that. You know, it's just not listening to my father-in-law, not listening to a lot of the gurus in the industry and really not taking it seriously. And I really wasn't making any money. So, yes, I got my license February of 2015. I uh, got a military July 2014. Sold cars from July to February 2015. And that's where I got my license at CRST. Um, I was with CRST for about six months before I decided, hey, this ain't, this ain't it. You figured, you, know, like you, ain't it. You, you figured that it was easy to get your license, but when it came down, when it came down to them paying you for for doing the job you you they felt that pay. you you they felt that pay. it wasn't there yeah they don't pay it's just and then like me and CRST had an agreement like we would use a portion of my VA benefit my not my VA benefit but my GI bill to pay for school um from my understanding it was supposed to never happen so i was locked into that contract um like everybody else that come and get their VA benefits or their 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 schooling from one of these mega carriers uh, getting paid complete crap. You know, obviously, I think I was making total. I think it was like a twenty six. It was twenty six cents a mile, but the way CRC was set up at the time, even though it was team operation, you were only getting paid half the miles on the truck. So if you broke it down, I was only getting paid like thirteen cents a mile. Now you know what? Now for companies that that does that, uh, CRST, CR England, uh, Western Express, you know, I I I feel that they 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 do that because they know that you guys don't have nowhere else to turn. It's like, especially for Western Express, like they is the last company that you can turn to that would give you an opportunity. And they feel that they giving you since they giving you the opportunity, they feel that they can just you know pay you any kind of way. Do you feel that way? Um, I feel more of his greed and their predatory. So, like you know, kind of like when it goes back to car sales, you know, you got a customer in there with a bad credit, the banks all of a sudden want to screw them over because they can, they can make the most money off of them. They're desperate. They, they they feel like they need you, and then at the end of the day, they quit or they back out. You know, no, you know, they're not taking that risk on you. They're not making the money, but they can make it on someone else down the road. You know, and that's that's the way I see uh, a lot of these big companies. I mean, um, CRST is. I would never refer anyone to CRST. You know, when someone tells me, "Hey, you know, 
I'm going to go to CRST to get my CDL school. I tell them, you know, don't stay as far as away from that company as you can, because they're going to get you in that truck and they're going to keep you out months at a time. And they're just going to take them. And I don't know how they are now. I haven't talked to any drivers from CRST now. Um, but from when I was there, you know, I was with a, a, a partner, you know, after I got a training, I was with a partner that lived in Washington. You know, they, CRST wanted you to stay out four weeks at a time and then get two days at home, which was, again, predatory. So, but here's the caveat to that. My partner was in Washington. I was in El Paso, Texas. So we were really out two months at a time because when my partner was home, I was running solo, probably up and down between Washington, California and back, and then I'd pick him up. And then when I was home, he'd run probably around Texas a little bit and come back and pick me up. You know, so it was really, you were out two months at a time over there and you weren't really getting any home time. And you also weren't getting paid. Like, so with CRC, I lost everything. You know, I lost my apartment. I lost my, you know, my car. I lost everything. Um, Because it was just so, you know, you had to pull advances to eat. They would run you for maybe a good two or three days, and then they'd sit you. Like, if you got to Salt Lake City, you were sitting there for at least two to three days. You know, um, uh, and, you know, in hindsight and, and smoke and mirrors, could I have probably ran a little bit better while I was over there? Maybe, but it constantly felt like I was, you know, we were digging ourselves out of a hole. Like, we were never able to get ahead. Um, as soon as we get, you know, across country and back, load in, you know, they would sit us. And sometimes it felt like it was on purpose. Sometimes it felt like, you know, we were just there to babysit the truck. You know, it's just, I would never recommend getting your CDL from a mega carrier. Um, the only one I will ever refer someone to is Prime Inc. Because I've heard a lot of success stories coming out of there and Messia Valley Transportation out of El Paso. Those are the only two I would ever refer anyone to. If you want to get your CDL, I think the best way to go is find a community college or a tech school, you know, apply for your own financing or your, your own grant and, and get it that way. But these other companies, they're going to, a lot of them are just going to take advantage of you. All right. All right. That's, and that's some good advice right there, man. That is some damn good advice. And it's, it's unfortunate how some of these uh, trucking companies treat, uh, treat potential drivers and new drivers at that, man. Yo, so let's uh let's let's take it back five years ago, man. You know, 2017. Um of course you had to take your drug test. What what was your what was your drug of choice that uh that forced you to fail the first time? So let's back it up a little bit. So CRST, I was fucking up. Well not fucking up, but or messing up, sorry to cuss. Um, I was messing up. So CRST, so I had went over to Messia Valley, uh, late 2015. Messia Valley, I could have done a lot better by them. Um, ran with my father-in-law for about a month, month and a half. Again, I was boneheaded, didn't want to listen to anyone. Um, uh, didn't want to listen to anyone. Uh, really didn't crash and burn over there, but really just got let go because of, uh, and that's where I really found like I was coping with some stuff and started messing around with stuff. Um, really didn't get caught over there. Uh, got let go from Messiah Valley, went over to night transportation. Same thing, just messing up, not really listening to anyone. Um, uh, got let go from there for doing a U-turn. Uh, they have like a, a strict zero u-turn policy let me go from there and then i went to earl henderson trucking known as trekker now um i got really i i messed up real bad over there you know i you know had a buddy on the truck with me that shouldn't have been on the truck with me i was doing their lease op outfit not really doing very well at all um decided you know that i was gonna be a dummy and do things I wasn't supposed to do. Ended up getting arrested in Farwell, Texas. Did about three days in jail. Um, got let go from that company, obviously. Came back from that company and you know, 
tried to go back to car sales, was messing up even more. At this point, I had a full fledged addiction, right? Um, to methamphetamine. Um, uh, messed up there. I was off the truck for about a year. That, you know, finally I got arrested again in El Paso for a possession charge. Went to jail, got out of jail. Me and my wife got together and she was like, look, you're getting out of El Paso. You're getting away from all of these, you know, bad influences. You're going to go live with your sister and Colleen. And I did. Was on the right track in Colleen, uh, but my sister quite wasn't ready to take on that burden of somebody, you know, trying to get on their feet. I mean, I had a job, you know, the next day I was in Colleen. I went to temp service. Um, Worked construction for like a week until me and my sister had our bout. She thought I had relapsed. I hadn't. To this day, I tell her I like I never relapsed and clean. I was really on the right on the right on the right path from Colleen. I so I got put out. I got put out on Colleen. My sister had thought I relapsed, which I hadn't. And uh, uh, so my wife had a really good friend of hers who, to this day, is you know like a sister to me, Christina. Uh, she let me. They, and she was staying with her mom at the time and her mom was gracious enough to let me get a place there uh, and, and her husband, Ron. And so when I got down to San Antonio, I worked at a moving outfit down in San Antonio. Um, did that for about four months. And, you know, Ron, he was on at the company name. Well, I'm not going to put the name out there because I'm not going to put the name out there. And so he... Uh, he got me on at that company. I ran team at that company again. I started making money again. Uh, am I still here? Yeah, but uh, Lamar, okay. Lamar, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm following you and I'm enjoying the 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 story. But where did you fail the drug test at in all of this? That's that's <laughs> what I'm that's what I'm getting to right now, man. <laughs> He got me on. He got me onto this this company. Uh, April of no, it was June of 2017. Um, I was messing up. My co-driver could tell that I was messing up. And uh, October 2017, I get a call. Hey, you need to go see your terminal manager. Terminal manager says, Hey, you need to go do a drug test. I had literally relapsed. The Friday before, and it was now Monday morning. They were calling me in for a drug test. Wow! So they called you in for so I they called I, you in for a random that Monday, huh? Yes, I thought I was I thought I was Gucci Bandana, dude. Like a week went by, I didn't hear anything. I was like, man, I, uh, you know, I need to get get my get my stuff together. I need to, you know, like this is an eye opener. Like I don't need to do it. And then like so, like the week after that, I get a call. I get a voicemail and it was the guy saying, Hey, Dr. So-and-so from Ferguson, Missouri, something, uh, you need to call us back. So like I called back, they had already left for the day. And so like the whole weekend I was just sweating bullets cause I knew what it was about. I just knew. And so like that following Monday came around and I called the number back and it was the doctor and he was like, Hey, you know, I'm the MRO for such and such company. Uh, we got a positive test result for amphetamines here. Or no, he says, uh, are you taking any medications that we need to know about? And I'm trying to list off any medication I could think of in my head. And then he was like, look, I'm going to stop you. There's no medications that will have you pop hot, you know, test positive for, you know, methamphetamines. Right. And from that point, I thought my trucking career was done. So and I, I, actually, it was. So the doc, so the you, you you talked to the doctor. Of course, they they sent the findings back to the company. The company yes. ca- the company called you up and said what? So the company, the safety department called me, and so they have a real nice way of firing you, right? They tell you, you know, you need to complete a SAP course. And they're removing you from all safety sensitive functions, which in turn is just they're letting you go. So was it's, it's really just a script they read off of, really. So was this company right here, uh, because of course now it's on your clearinghouse, 
was this company was this company right here was was they uh sap ready or you had to go to a different company to complete the the sap so, so the company i'm at now yeah or is it the same company where you at now i am at the same company i got fired from buddy awesome. and it's only by the grace of god it's only by the so it's not on my clearing house. This was back in 2017. Clearing house didn't become available. What was it? 2019, 2020. Oh, you was so fucking lucky, bro. Wow. It is on my deck, wow. It is, you... it is on my deck. Okay, but oh, okay, but it's it's on your deck. It's on your deck report. But be but because clearing house wasn't in invented. It wasn't even. I don't think it was thought of in 2017. Wow, you so lucky, bro. So, okay, so with the same company, they, you know, sort of let you go from driving duties and everything. What did you what did you have to do with with the company to get your your status back? What 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 all happened? So So, I thought my my truck driving career was done. So, I started working at a local company in San Antonio. They didn't pull your DAC. They didn't pull you. All they did was pull your MBR. So they, they had no clue. And, and to this day, I feel like I should have been more honest with them, but, uh, cause if I would have gotten an accident or something and that came out, you know, that would look really bad on myself. Um, uh, so I worked with them pretty much the rest of 2017, the rest of 2018. So, my buddy that I have at this company was able to get a hold of a higher up at the company and tell him I look like, you know, Lamar has turned his life around, you know, like, and I, and I had, like I had another baby on the way. Uh, I had completely 180 my life. Like that was no longer a part of my life anymore. Um, like I was, I was more focused on my family. Like, um, and so he was able to get a hold of a higher up and a higher up told him, look, let him get six months to a year of driving experience in, and then we'll bring him back. And so I did, I was at that local company, um, got my, you know, my year and whatever over there, got a hold of the company and talked to, you know, this guy. And I told him, Hey, you know, I got my year in. What, what do I do? It's like, I need to make more money. I have a baby on the way, or I just had a new baby. I said, I need to upgrade the place that I'm living in. You know, I was living in a two bedroom, one bath apartment. I had four kids. One was a baby, three were, you know, one was a toddler, two were older kids. I said, I need to upgrade. I said, local ain't doing it. You know, and I said, what do I, tell me what I need to do to come back. So Basically, I found some online courses I could do, some drug and alcohol treatment courses I could do. Uh, I did. I think I did a 12 or 14 hour course online, paid for it, sent him in a certificate uh, with his higher ups, his bosses, I guess the owner of the company, and told him what was going on. Uh, I got approved on the contingency that I had a random drug test every month for a year. Then I had to run teams with a trusted driver at the company so they can keep an eye on me. Uh, and that's, that's what I did. Um, and I've been at this company for three years now, man. Awesome story, bro. I mean, that's, that's crazy that, uh, that the company, and you know what, that's, that's not too far fetch, you know, because the company, like if, if, if a company that you enjoy working for, and and you did something bad, but you was able to turn your your situation around because of that company, and that company was able to bring you back and still treat you and give you the respect at the as the driver that you are. That is fucking awesome, bro! Congratulations mm -hmm. on that, man. So so five years later. Uh, you know, you're you're ranked at the at the top three, top four drivers there, uh, out of a fleet mm -hmm. of uh six hundred and forty trucks, um, and you're one of and you're one of the top three drivers. That's that's another milestone for you. 
uh now with mm-hmm. the now with the same company you're you 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 decided to give uh owner operations a try so you're you're leasing uh you're you're leasing their their vehicles to do that or how how no, how's that so, going to work so currently i'm on my last load with them right now i put my one week's notice in last saturday uh there's another outfit in the pacific northwest that offers you a lease of uh, through Kenworth. Um, you get full access to the load board, and so I have a couple options on the table. Uh, one of them, you know, a Texas company. You know, but my vision of where I want to go in my career, I want to be able to learn as much as I can, and so having access to a load board. Or the load board, like not just like, you know, like USA Truck, you know, they give you their load board. No, you get access to the load board. You book your own loads. Um, um, so that will give me the capacity to be able to learn, even though it's a lease. Like, I think the, the value I get out of it is being able to learn how to do the back end of the business, the back office stuff. Um, you know, book freight, negotiate freight. Um, really see what goes into the logistics side of truck driving, not just drive the truck. And then eventually I want to be able to, you know, get, you know, uh, an authority active, you know, sooner or later, start putting under our owner operators under my numbers, you know, run my own truck and eventually grow a fleet. I don't know how big it would be. I don't know how small, uh, you know, my dreams, aspirations is to one day have my own fleet. Do you? And so the more I can learn now, what's up? Do you think? Now let me ask you this, and uh, you know, I'm I'm being honest because what everything that's going on today, you know, with the fuel prices, the 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 weak the weak rates, bro. Do you honestly feel that you know going uh, owner operator, you know, lease op is 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 uh is a good thing for you at this? point? At this point in time, I, I think it's I think it's going to be hard. Yes, but if you learn how to, and the, you know me, and my because my father is an owner operator right now, right? If you learn how to run the truck, it is like I said, it's going to be hard. But if you learn how to do it in hard times, and be able to, um, I guess manage your money right in hard times, what do you think you're going to be able to do in good times? Hmm. Okay. 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 So you figure coming in, you know, and, and as Denzel Washington said, you, you never succeed without failing. So exactly. You know, so you figure coming in during the hard times would get, would, would give you more knowledge of, of the hardships. So when the good times come around, you know how to better handle it. You're more humble. Yeah. That's freaking awesome. Well, Lamar, man, thank you very much for coming in and chopping it up with me, man. I really do appreciate it. Awesome story. I really enjoyed myself. I, you know, coming from, you know, coming from your 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 drug situation to the company that's giving you the opportunity to get your to get your life back. And now that you're transitioning into uh owner operations to get more much more knowledge out of the industry, man. This this was a this was awesome to hear, man. Hopefully somebody could take, you know, take this and and get inspired by what you have done, man. Yes, sir. I mean, like, since, you know, all that happened back in 2017, last year I bought my first house. You know, I'm able to, you know, give my kids, you know, what they truly deserve. You know, they, they like to play sports and you know, a lot of that stuff costs money. I'm able to, you know, keep them happy with that. You know, they have, you know, good clothes. I'm not saying they have the best clothes or the flashiest clothes, but they have good clothes that they like. Uh, they, they have food in the in the house 24 freaking 7. Uh, they're hungry, go in there, get something to eat. You know, and that's it's just a true blessing. Um, it, it really is. And, and, and for someone to think that things like this could happen on your own without help, is is wrong uh you you know whether it's help from a support system or if you're spiritual or religious you know through a religious sense 
I'm more spiritual. Um, and one of my messages to drivers out there that have a problem, knock it off. You know, it's, it's not worth it. Um, one, you're, you're rolling the dice every time you push those air brakes in to drive off. That's one of the main things I realized once that happened, once all this started crashing down. It's like I was rolling the dice every time I put this truck in the drive or I put the brakes in. If I hit someone, it's all, it's, it's going to come crashing, let alone kill someone. And for drivers that are, were in the situation that I was in, that there's always hope that just you, you need to get, you're going to get a lot of no's before you get the one yes or the one. And it's usually going to be a maybe. You're never going to get a straight up yes. It's always going to be a maybe and contingencies of that maybe. And you are going to look be looked at in the beginning as someone they can't trust because honestly they can't. But as soon as you get past that and realize that you messed up, no matter what it was for, whether it was accidental or whether it was on purpose, that, you know, like, like me, I messed up. You know, and once you realize that you messed up and that they have a reason to not trust you and that you have to gain that trust, you'd be a, a hundred times more better. That's what's up. That's what's up. Lamar, again, man, thank you for, you know, coming on and sharing your testimony, your story with us. I really do appreciate it, bro. You know, guys, the best conversation starts here on the Lockout Men podcast show. That's what we do over here. We get inspirational uh guests on our show and special thanks to Lamar for coming on and uh sharing his testimony with us, man. Yo, Lamar, yeah, I know sir. I know you busy and everything, trying to get everything, you know, in in play. Um let's let's touch back uh let's let's touch base later on down the line when you actually uh uh running a running your own truck and see, you know, we can talk again and see how life is treating you then. Yes sir. All right, bro. You take it easy, and uh, and yeah, we'll get back together later on. All righty, yes, sir. There's something in the air tonight. Got a feeling coming over me. I swear that this is that place to be in the water, in the the water.